Hi, I'm Kelsey Lewis. According to AlcoholAlert.com, every 30 minutes someone is killed in an alcohol-related crash. I have witnessed the consequences people have to deal with after making bad decisions while under the influence and in a vehicle. I have a story I'd like to share with you. In 2008, I was a freshman in high school at the time. A senior from my high school, Jill White, while under the influence, jumped from a moving car intending to reenact a stunt from Jackass 2 with his also drunken buddies. This destructive decision caused him to suffer traumatic brain injuries along with paralysis on the right side of his body. After defying all odds, he, in relearning every skill imaginable, Joe was given a second chance at life. Joe White then went back to high school and entered the special education program where he completed his senior year and graduated with the class of 2008. Joe White thinks his lucky stars every day of his life that he was given a second chance at life. However, with his brain injury, he and the paralysis on the right side of his body, he's, on, he's limited as to what he can do in his life. Even though Joe White did not technically die, a part of him did. Joe can no longer live his life as a normal guy, or as he would be if he hadn't made that decision he did that night. Now, even though Joe wasn't technically driving the car, while under the influence, one of his friends was, and they weren't in the right state of mind to stop him from doing what he was doing. Driving under the influence is a major concern in our society today. According to endmelessdeath.org, uh, the national average of alcohol-related traffic fatalities is 40%. Drinking and driving endangers the lives of the, in the well-being of the driver, their passengers, as, and as well as innocent people around them. There are several myths about alcohol and driving many undereducated teenagers tend to believe. Number one, alcohol is a stimulant. No, it's not. Alcohol is a depressant that acts on the central nervous system like an anesthetic to depress the activity of the brain. Number two, drinking coffee will sober you up. Coffee can't rid your body of alcohol. It just it just makes you a nervous, wide awake drunk. Only time can reverse impairment. Number three, I always stay away from the hard stuff. Alcohol is alcohol. Beer has the same effect as straight scotch. Number four, I'm bigger so I can handle my alcohol better. Size is only a factor in how much you can drink. Impairment in motor reflexes and judgment begin with the first drink. Number five, all I have to do is splash my face with cold water. Splash all you want, or even take a cold shower. It may make you cleaner, but it's not gonna sit, it's not gonna sober you up or make you a safe driver for that matter. Since everyone, since not everyone makes good decisions about drinking and driving, we have to rely on our state governments to make sure the laws uh, protect us. According to DontDriveDrunk.org, 101 children aged 14 years and younger died of alcohol-related accidents in 2009. If that fact isn't enough to stop you from drinking and driving, I don't know what will. I hope that everyone realizes the risk they're taking anytime they drink and drive. Our cemeteries are full of people who thought they were okay to drive with the innocent victims who, whose paths they crossed. Thank you.